Hello and welcome to the Local Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Johnson. The Local Leaders Podcast provides a platform for successful business owners to share their stories, their experiences, their advice, and their ideas in order to help our listeners achieve more success in their business and in their lives. Get ready. Another great show is coming up. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Jeff Johnson, your host of the Local Leaders Podcast, and I am um, super stoked today, even though I was running late, to be here with uh, Jeremy Faith of Cedar. Uh, and Jeremy's gonna gonna share his story with us, and and uh, we're gonna have a great conversation, hopefully, and, and provide some great advice and tips and uh, things that you'll be able to do in your restaurant uh, business to make it more successful. So, with that, welcome to the show, Jeremy. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having us. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, when I when I received your email, I was like, "Whoa!" I listen to a lot of podcasts. I got I got to be on this. This sounds like fun. So, um, uh, well, we're always really- yeah, we're always excited to have um, to have people like yourself on, and and we look forward to it and uh, getting your kind of getting your information and your message out there. So, uh, if you wanna wanna just tell us a little about Cedar, we'd we'd love to hear it. I will. So. I guess you kind of ha- got to have the backstory to get the the story about Cedar. Um, I've been in the restaurant business since I was 18 years old. Um, found a, a love for the business and a love for food. And uh, really, it, it kind of came from a trip to Japan with my dad. Uh, we went on a, a senior trip. And um, what a unique culinary experience and a, and a cultural experience you'll re- receive going on a trip like that. So that kind of sparked uh, everything for me, um, went out and got a job at a Longhorn Steakhouse is, uh, where I started and kind of built a career from the ground up. I started washing dishes and cleaning bathrooms oh, wow. and, uh, talk about starting at yeah, the bottom, huh? the <laughs> bottom. Yeah. And I told myself I had to clean one more dish. I was out of there. And, one, uh, one more no, dish and clean one more toilet, right? Yeah, I'm out of here. No, no, it was great. Um, you know, talk about starting at the bottom and, and building it up. I, you know, quickly um, kind of moved up and, you know, opportunity, opportunity, people call off or people miss a shift. And it's just like, hey, you want to move up? You want to move up? You want to learn something else? And um, quickly learned how to pretty much do everything in that building as a team member. Um, and then opportunity again, um, you know, worked for the training department for the company and got to travel all over the place and um, open new restaurants and see these things from the ground up. Um, really got to see some behind the scenes stuff that not a lot of people get to see. So um, met a girl while doing that, uh, doing a local one and uh, decided traveling to Arizona and traveling out West uh, to open new restaurants wasn't going to work anymore. <laughs> so um she was like, babe, you're gone a month at a time. I don't, that's not cool. And I was like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really not. So we got to figure that out. So I took a management position and again, opportunities and uh, advancement and just kind of worked my way up uh, in a management position and um, was up for a GM position and unfortunately didn't get it. Um, you know, they, they gave it to a guy who, who deserved it. I, I, I really believe that. And um I don't know. I kind of looked at my life and where I was at in my age and what my goals were and and things like that. So um, my dad and I kind of came together and said, why don't we do our own thing? You know, Um, maybe it's time for you to step away from that. Have you gotten everything out of that that you you can? And at that time, I really think that I had. Um, And it was, you know, everything's got a shelf life, right? It was just time to it was time to put that in the past and, and do something else. So, hey, not to um, not to interrupt you, but I love that question that your your dad asked you. Have you gotten everything out of that that you feel like you can? Um, yeah. What a great question to ask yourself before you make a move, uh, especially yeah. especially the entrepreneurship. So, good job, Dad. Yeah, my dad is a. Uh, a uh, small business guy. He's, he owned a small business for a long time. It was a collections agency, a local business, um, you know, sold that and 
kind of not really retired, but didn't really know what he wanted to do. And then he jumped back into another small business and is a, is a you know, a third owner of that business. And, um, you know, he's, he's kind of always had that mentality, the entrepreneur mentality. And, um, you know, he took, taught me at a young age, don't be afraid to jump. You know, when opportunity presents itself, jump. Um, a lot of people in this world are afraid to do that. And that's the first step. You know, you can't do anything until you do that. So, right, right. Um, no, and that's, that's kind of how Cedar was born. And Cedar is, a, you know, Cedar's a, a, almost a 200-year-old building in um, Covington, Kentucky, um, about, I don't know, three minutes from downtown Cincinnati. I mean, I can see the Bengals and the Cincinnati Red Stadium from right here. So, oh, man, um, we, we know who you're pulling for this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had a big win yesterday, too. So it was, yeah. it was a good day to be a Bengals fan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, I keep interrupting, but you're saying <clears throat> stuff that – it's making me think of ideas. <laughs> sure, no, no, of course. Interrupt. That's that's what we're here to do, right? Yeah, well. Um, so. No, but Cedar is a, Cedar is a, a brunch restaurant, uh, scratch-made food. Um, we specialize in craft cocktails. Everything's fresh. Everything's made in-house. We don't own a freezer. We don't own a microwave. They're not even on the property. Um, oh, wow. That's everything we do is, is cooked to order, and we put a lot of – passion and pride into our food and beverage a lot. Um, it's, you know, it's what we're all about, man. Well, it, uh, you know, I, I was popping around on the website and everything and, and I love some of those, those pictures you guys have up and, uh, the menu looks fantastic. So, you know, anybody in, in that area that hadn't had the opportunity to, to check you guys out and, and have a meal with you, we encourage you to go to Cedar. Uh, and see these, see Jeremy and his his team um, as quickly as you can. So, how long has Cedar been open as of now? Is it four years? No, we opened. No, uh, we opened July of 2020. We opened okay. right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, oh, good timing. Good timing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's you know, people often ask uh, and make comments. That, uh, you know, and ask why someone would start a restaurant then. But, you know, I think in, in probably your case as well, the simple answer is you, you were preparing to open probably a year before when it, you know, you've got a building, you've got to um, prepare that building for operation and uh, nobody knew COVID was coming. So I, I'm, I'm assuming you fell into that same boat. Yeah, we, we purchased this building and renovated the, uh, and the kitchen was kind of ready. It was just kind of reorganizing and, and changing the schematic back there. But uh, the front of house, the dining room was a disaster. Um, so it was a full year of renovating and, um, you know, that hap the COVID happened right in the middle of that. And, um, you know, we don't quit at anything we do. So obviously that was not an option. We were like, no, we'll power through. We'll be fine. Um, we'll start super super thin with staff and we'll kind of figure it out as we go and, and that's basically what we did yeah well and it looks like you know i'm gonna make an assumption here but when i look at your menu um especially when i'm looking over at the lunch side it, it looks like it it's a, a it's very feasible for that to be a to-go kind of meal so did you change yeah. the menu because of covid or was this your intention from day one no, this was our intention from day one. Um, you know, we like to keep our menu pretty fresh. We update it about every two months. Um, okay. Take, you know, take things off, put things on, change things. Um, you know, we're always looking to sharpen and hone um, our culinary skills and and uh, just try to experiment and, you know, try new things. And um, no, I would agree with you, though, that our, our lunch is definitely the more to go favorable. Nobody... Yeah. Nobody wants eggs uh, in a box. So it's not good. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't work, does it? It just doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, no. unless you got a drive through and uh, you slap a biscuit on it uh, and something hot, then yeah. you know, that'll pass. But it's definitely not uh, not fillet and eggs, which looks fantastic. No. I didn't eat yet today, so I'm sitting here looking at it, going, "Oh my god, <laughs> it looks awesome." Um, and I like the hangover. That's always a good one. That is that is our number one seller. We sell uh, a couple a couple hundred of those uh, every weekend, so that's oh, that's a hot dish for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt. Well, the, the menu is fantastic, and and for those listening, its uh, website is cedarculinary.com. 
Um, and I know we flash it up. Uh, we'll be flashing it up early, early, but I didn't want anyone to miss it. Go check out that menu and, and uh, again, get yourself down there. But um, what a, what a great looking menu. And, and um, you know, it looks like you guys, uh, as you said, I love the fact that you don't have a freezer or a microwave. So amazing. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the ingredients that we're working with, you, they're not like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe they're working with that stuff. Like it's not, it's not special, crazy stuff. Uh, we take pretty simple ingredients and uh, we just treat them right. You know, it's all about treating your ingredients the right way and putting them in a microwave. I mean, somebody can do that at home, you know, that's, yeah. I, I would feel bad charging someone um, money uh, to do that. You know, me, me personally, you know, our vision is just not to do that, that kind of stuff. So um, everything here is fresh and, and we try to keep it out of a freezer, keep it out of a microwave, but you know, our ingredients are pretty simple stuff. It's chicken thighs. It's, you know, it's filet. It's, it's stuff that everybody works with at home. You know, we're just treating it the right way. Yeah. And, and, and I like the, I like the, the slant or the bend or the, the mm -hmm. cedar twist that you put on, you know, all those, mm -hmm. they, they look, they look super good. And, uh, I, I wish I was nearby for lunch. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, are you guys open seven days a week or are you, um, what, what, what's your schedule? No, we are closed on Mondays and we are open, um, Tuesday through Thursday, um, 8 30 in the morning until two in the afternoon. And then we are open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 3 uh, p.m. And the reason we're closed on Monday really is, again, it's a, almost a 200 year old building. Um, after the, you know, eight or 900 guests that come through here, um, you know, on Saturday and Sunday, this building just needs a break. <laughs> it needs a day to, to relax and get cleaned. And we, we come in here every Monday and, and touch up paint um you know touch up the flowers you know pressure wash the patio i mean we have a patio that seats about 70 people so oh, wow. um yeah that patio just it needs cleaning after after every weekend and those are those are the little touches we think and we believe that you know puts us on a two-hour wait every saturday and sunday for brunch you know it's it's crazy that that, that many people want to come meet here on, on saturday and sunday. we're so thankful for for those people but the little touches and, and the cleaning and the painting and all those things those are the things that need to happen in this place on monday you know so we're ready yeah that's that's awesome well did did you have any idea uh, how successful that you know did you did you anticipate being this successful this soon because uh, you're again you know not that old you're just over a year old yeah, no, we, um, you know, we definitely, as a family, we're, we're not, uh, we're not unsuccessful. You know, we, we definitely know that we're going to work hard. Um, that's what we tell ourselves all the time. No one's ever going to outwork us. Um, you know, we'll do the work. We'll be in here Monday. We'll be in here painting. We'll be in here pressure washing. We'll be doing those things. No one is going to outwork us. And the result of that was, you know, some early success. And, um, I credit my team more than anything. I mean, talk about coming here and being just dealt a, a very st strange hand of cards. Uh, you don't know if you're open one day or, um, you know, talk about being a bartender. Nobody's allowed to sit at the bar. I mean, how are you, how are you going to have a bartender that wants to bartend at a restaurant that sells, you know, we sell 400 cocktails on a Sunday. Um, wow. You know, that's, that's a big part of our business. And then one day you tell them, Hey, sorry, man the wall is nobody can sit at the bar. <laughs> so I, I give all the credit to them. Um, you know, talk about just adapting to the environment and persevering and um, just being dedicated to, to something we're trying to build here. So. Yeah. What, what was the kind of, kind of where did the, where did the vision for the, the restaurant mm -hmm. come from and, you know, the menu and all that, was it, was that just stuff you love to eat or kind of give me some background there? Um, so I'd say the concept of the entire restaurant front to back, uh, we'll start with that is a collaboration of me and my parents, you know, they, um, they have an eye for, um, what looks good, what doesn't look good. Um, you know, what, we, the first thing we really did is we identified who we were. Um, I think that's important is what's your identity? And our identity is one hour vacations. 
when our guests come in here, they should be on a one hour vacation. They should feel like, you know, they're, they're on vacation. They shouldn't see receipts. They shouldn't see garbage on the floor, clipboards, um, nothing that makes them think of work, nothing that makes them think of their desk or any other thing. They should come here, unplug, relax, um, unwind, have a drink, have have three, whatever, you know, <laughs> we prefer you have three. Have a drink or three. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Have a drink or three and just totally relaxed like you're on vacation. So that's our saying. Um, one hour vacations, that's the goal. Get them, get them on that one hour vacation. And that, that's our, our philosophy for everything we do here. If we change a menu item or we see something we don't like, um, it all comes back to does that equal one hour vacation? If it doesn't, we don't do it. Um, and then the menu, you know, um, really came down to what I like to eat and what we like to eat and what's popular for breakfast and brunch at other places. And you do a lot of research in that, in that menu development process. And then it was, like you said before, how do you twist it cedar? How do you make it a cedar twist? You know, yeah. um, any, anyone can have biscuits and gravy what's going to make our special. And it's that lamb chorizo gravy. It's that combination of lamb and chorizo. Um, we had lamb on the menu for something else when we first opened, it's no longer on the menu. Um, and I was just like, man, I really want to utilize that lamb in another way, but lamb is just so lean. It's just so lean and you can't make a gravy out of that. So then you take chorizo, super fatty, you combine them um, and boom, lamb chorizo gravy was born. That is, that sounds awesome. I'd love to have that on the, what did I see? A, a bowl? I saw a biscuit bowl or something. Um, yeah. The biscuit bowl, yeah. Yeah. That, that looked amazing. I'm a, I'm a biscuit and gravy kind of guy coming from the South. So that caught my attention and, uh, and looked like a good hangover remedy to me as well. Yeah. It's a lot of food. It's, it's delicious. Yeah. I'll bet. Well, what an amazing uh, restaurant you guys uh, have built. And I love the fact that, you know, what you said, just to repeat it for our listeners is identified, you identified who you are first um, and kind of figured out what that guest experience should feel like. Um, not mm -hmm. look, And look like, I know is a, the aesthetics is a big part of it too, but, um, but you were going after delivering a, an exceptional customer experience. And, and I applaud you guys for that. Uh, and it looks like you've accomplished that goal. Uh, although I know it's a work in process each and every day. It is. It sure is. It's never ending. Yeah. It's never ending. Uh, but the most important part for us has been, you know, obviously we have our dream and our goals and what we're doing and how we see things. It's really just about getting your people to see through the same lens you're seeing through. Um, that's been, you know that's been the best part is just trying to, to get them to see through that so that we can go and, you know, do, do our other, our other goals. You know? Did, um, speaking of, speaking of that, and I'm going to come, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to come back to, um, to kind of that, that how you, well, actually, let me just ask you, what, did, did you do anything specific um, or how did you approach trying to, give that sense of ownership, that sense of vision from your eyes. How did you approach that with your team to kind of get them to share that same lens or vision? Well, honestly, it all started with, I, I have to give a lot of credit to my head chef. Um, you know, we're not big on titles around here. I mean, I would, I would title myself as executive chef. Um, then I have a head chef. His name is Zach Schnook. And, um, when we opened, he had just gotten back from traveling the world with his four children and his wife um, and got cut short because of COVID and had to come home. Um, they had two months of their trip left, uh, but they went, they went all over the place. Um, so when he, he came back and he, he had heard I was opening this place up, he hit me up. And at that time, I was just like, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. I want to keep payroll super low. I'm going to start in the kitchen by myself. My dad's going to help me. You know, my brother can help out on the weekends. Um, it, it, it was a dumpster fire <laughs> at yeah. first, for sure. It was, it was not good uh, because we, we just caught traction and we were super busy on the weekends and um, it wasn't good. So I had started um, Zach out. He was a cook at Longhorn is how I knew him. Um, I brought him on and had him start on the bar 
he opened my bar for me, got that organized. And, um, you know, I just figured he wanted this job for some quick cash. He was working over at Longhorn. Um, I just didn't think this was going to be a priority for him. He got in here. He loved it immediately. And he was like, dude, I want to get back in that kitchen with you. And um, two weeks in, we converted him from bartender to, um, you know, line cook. And, um, you know, he basically told me in the beginning, he's like, I want to be a part of this in a much bigger way than just cooking potatoes and eggs. Okay. I want to be, I want to be a part of this thing. So he, uh, he helped me figure a lot of stuff out there those first couple of months. And, um, we wouldn't be where we are today without him. And he's a big part of being able to get everyone else on the same page because he freed me up from being back there to where I could be out here and I could be in the dining room or I could be wherever, you know, um, and I could be doing, you know, more, more ownership type of stuff. So right. <clears throat> him, him coming back there and, and helping me solve a lot of those issues is the reason we are where we are. So well, I applaud him. Well, yeah, that's awesome. And, um, and, and it's, I applaud you for recognizing um, when you have a great employee or, or a great partner or, or whatever his, his term might be. Uh, but it's great to have a, a team that is um, kind of on fire with the, with, you know, that of the, of the owners. Um, and the fact that you guys were able to, to get that vision um, you know, communicate that vision to your people and then they go out and live it every day as a testament uh, to your leadership. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Hey, what um, I'm curious about kind of some of your some of your major challenges. Uh, I know COVID has been a big one, but um, anything in particular that that you want to mention that's been a big challenge that you've been working that you either overcame or are working to overcome? Um, our challenges are a little bit different, I think, than everyone else's. We're not, we're not having trouble staffing. Um, I don't know why. Lucky, maybe a little bit, um, you know, a little bit of word of mouth, I think, from some family friends. Uh, we landed uh, some pretty talented chefs in the last uh, couple of months. And, um, you know, the key to keeping them is just take care of them. And, um, you know, if they have something they'd like to say, you hear them out. And as long as it's not completely out of bounds and it still fits within the vision, you gotta, you gotta listen to them and, and try to take care of them. So um, that combined with our hours of operation, we think are kind of our competitive edge. I mean, you know, you can work here and still be home at, you know, four, four thirty. And if you have kids or you're married or you like to go out and have fun, you can still do all those things. You're not, you're not tied down to this restaurant at nine, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, that, that, you know what, that the fact that you recognize that is, is pretty, pretty, pretty um, amazing. And, and you got a great point because people are looking for, uh, and we used to talk about it on some of our earlier podcasts about quality of life and how you, <clears throat> how you achieve that in a restaurant business. And um, just by the, by the concept, you've created that opportunity. So Again, uh, kudos to you guys. And I'm glad to hear that staffing is, is not a problem for you guys. And um, the competitive advantage, advantage you have from your schedule is, is probably a, a testament to it. And family and friend connections uh, helping out as well. So, um, you know, that's fantastic. Any, you know, how, how are things on the, the food shortage and food cost side? Bad. Yeah. <laughs> real, real bad. Uh, we just, we just crunched some numbers, um, a couple of days ago, you know, we were just talking, I mean, you know, it, it's a crazy time just in general. And, um, but we were just talking money the other day and it just got my head, head spinning a little bit. So I really dove into some, some invoices and I mean, just from January to now, um, I mean, the cost of something like a chicken thigh has tripled in cost. Um, just insane. Um, oil to go in your fryers has doubled in cost. Um, I did the math on gloves, the gloves we're using. Uh, every time someone changes their glove, it's 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're changing their gloves in the back, you know, a hundred times a day. Yeah. So it's, um, it's pretty bad. And it's, and then it's the shortages and, um, you know, that's, 
that's probably the most frustrating one is, is the shortages. I mean, things like straws and paper products and, um, you know, to go boxes and, you know, to go boxes and to go containers, you know, it's not a huge part of our business, but that's really got me, you know, thinking about other people's business that, that are pushing for the carry out, especially in a time right now where people are maybe a little uncomfortable to go out and, um, you know, their option is to get carry out dining. Um, what are those, what are those restaurants putting their food in if they can't get to go boxes? So yeah. but it's really concerning. Yeah, it's definitely been an, an industry challenge and, um, you know, all, everything is up. I've heard oil mentioned specifically now about three times as to how much the <laughs> fryer oil is, has gone up. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's an explanation that for, for something out there. But, um, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with shortages, one, one thing I think that you guys have that gives you an advantage is that you're, con you're constantly updating and improving your menu. Mm -hmm. Um, are you, you know, you able to to kind of work in and out of those shortages by changing menu items, or is is that not really a great solution short term? Um, so we have you know a couple of just really really big fan favorite staple menu items, and um, you know that's kind of what would what would hold us up from a couple of those. Um, you know, we've been told we have the best chicken and waffles around, so getting rid of the chicken thigh um, would just be really hard for us. So unfortunately, you know, you got to raise that price and that, that just comes, comes back around to the consumer, which is, you know, the worst, the worst feeling. Um, right. You know, we, we, you know, we're dealing with that challenge though, just like everybody else. And, um, you know, hopefully it's just a short term problem, which I think it, I think it is. Um, yeah. Let's, let's hope let's, so for hope. everyone's sake. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, are you, how have you addressed these and, or maybe how are you addressing since just, you know, you just recently kind of dug into it, uh, again to see where things were. Um, have, have you been able to raise menu prices to, to reflect it? And are there other cost reduction strategies you put into place? That's funny you say that me and my head chef were, were talking yesterday and I said, man, I really dove into some invoices and, uh, it's not, it's not good. It's not good what we're paying compared to, you know, just not even that long ago, January and even like March and April and May. Um, he's like, what, what are the stuff and what are the things? And, you know, a couple of months ago, him and I looked at crab and we looked at beef and we were like, those are like the two big ones that we're losing on. So let's just raise the price for filet and eggs. Let's raise the price for the crabby bin. Um, let's raise the price for the Toro tacos. We got to figure it out. No worries. Right. I said, dude, we didn't figure it out. <laughs> I, just, I just like really <laughs> dove in there. It's a lot more than that. And, um, you know, are we losing money on the chicken and waffles? No. But what we were making um, on the chicken and waffles six months ago compared to now isn't even close to the same. So it's – we're not losing money on those items, but we're just not making the money we we're accustomed to making. So right. – um, right. that's, that's kind of what we're seeing. And then things like gloves and oil, like yeah. those are just things I kind of think you don't ever think about. And, um, you know, the, I mean, when was the, when was the last time the price of fryer oil changed? Probably never. Um, I mean, honestly, so, um, and I think a lot of those price increases to answer what you were saying before is, um, you know, these companies that are, that are manufacturing these things are having to pay, their employees ridiculous wages because they're competing against the federal government. Um, right. So I think that's how that trickles down to us, just like that trickles down to the guests. So it's all, it's all going to come back to wage and labor and there's just such a labor shortage everywhere right now. So. Yeah. Well, and again, thank goodness you guys aren't <clears throat> having to live, having to deal with that as well. And, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that your labor rates are probably, um, um, you know, are obviously adequate to keep keep your your great staff on board, and maybe they're even better than adequate. Um, but you know, for most of us, labor rates have gone up, and I'm sure that's probably true for you guys as well, just with cost of living and everything else. Absolutely, you know, it's uh definitely gone, definitely gone up a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, well, let me switch gears and and ask you about um, here lately. I've been I've been trying to talk a little bit more about marketing um, yep. and a cu couple other topics. Um, just curious as to what you guys are doing today on the marketing front um, and how it's working for you. Well, all in since we've been open. Um, all in for marketing. I've spent four hundred dollars. <laughs> Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, we ran a we ran a Google ad campaign last year. Um, I was just a little bit worried about the colder months and with closing our outdoor dining. I just wanted to run a little three month test trial. And um, I had a, a kid here working for me who, you know, whatever he does the Google ads and he's like, dude, I'll do it free of charge. I work here. It would be in my best interest for me to do this for you. Um, He's like, it's going to cost you, uh, you know, 400 bucks to run the ads for this long. And I said, do it. Why not? So we did it. And, um, you know, he gave me some numbers and it sounded like we probably got a return out of that. He's like, but there's no way to tell with Google ads. I mean, all it is is you get clicks and stuff and, and there's no way to really measure the sales um, yeah. for that and, and what you got out of it. So. I had uh, two hosts uh, when we opened who ran my um, ran, ran my social media page. They ran our Instagram and they posted every day. And um, you know, we kind of grew followers through that. Um, but we haven't done a whole lot. It's a lot of word of mouth and social media. And social media is free. So yeah, as long as as long as you've got some people with some extra time and and ability and willingness mm -hmm. to. Uh, to help you out there and and make sure that you're consistently posting and all that yeah. good stuff but um you know again congratulations your marketing budget is uh is not the, <laughs> not your biggest problem obviously <laughs> no it's not and you know we explore it all the time i actually just talked uh this morning i had a call with a local a local marketing company and uh, a couple of young guys who are, are pretty energetic and and um they have a have a ton of accounts um and clients right down here, right where we're at, uh -huh. that are that are loving them. And um, you know, for us right now, where we're at, we're just we're not comfortable, um, you know, doing that at the moment. So we're just trying to grow this thing uh, through word of mouth and, and social media. And until we get big enough, we don't plan on spending any money on marketing. Yeah, no plans to spend. Well, that's hallelujah, right? <laughs> For now, you know, yeah. it's a it's a fluid situation. It could change at any moment. Well, it's and and that's what it you know you can turn on the faucet when you need to. I mean, that's what marketing yeah. is supposed to be all about. And, and you could always crank up, um, you know, some different strategies if if and when the time is right. But you know, a lot of our a lot of our guests have have shared that you know they're holding back on the marketing side primarily because they can't support more business uh, from right. a, a staffing standpoint and. Um, so, you know, marketing has been one of those areas that have people have, have cut back on. And so I'm just curious to kind of see who's doing what and, uh, what the future looks like for restaurant marketing companies out there. And, um, yeah. you know, whether that, I, you know, whether that business is kind of sliding downhill and, and will it recover? I, who knows? Right. But, um, so, you know, what, what's kind of the next step for you guys? What are y'all thinking? What are y'all, what are y'all wanting to do to do next? Well, we just opened our second location two weeks ago um, in Bellevue, Kentucky. So about 10 minutes down the road. Um, it is a, um, it's the same general concept. It's more of a Latin American menu. Um, we looked at our menu here at Cedar and what was successful. And it was a lot of our Latin American influenced dishes. Um, so we kind of thought to ourselves, we can make a whole menu out of that. And we did. And um you know, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on the food. A little bit of a little bit of a slow start um, over there. Very, very, very similar to here, though. We started weekdays, especially. It was pretty crickety around here. Um, you know, it's it's brunch. I mean, it, it's it's definitely uh, something you have to build and kind of grow into. Um, same over there. Our weekends here from day one have always been huge. And very similar over there. Our weekends have been pretty big. I mean, that's the restaurant business, you know, weekends are, are where you make your paycheck. So, um, 
but we, we feel pretty good with what we got going on over there um, early on. We're, we're, we're seeing that the way that menu's laid out and what kind of food we're using over there is it's going to be a, a lot less of an overhead and, and a lot less food cost and a lot less payroll over there for sure. Um, that restaurant just doesn't require what Cedar does. So we feel pretty good about that and uh, very educational for us to kind of bring some of that information back over here um, to see what we can change here to kind of maybe make this place a little more like that. One. Is well, I mean, that, that's great learnings already, and, and especially in two weeks. But is it a full service res, restaurant as well? It is a full service, and it's you know, it's a, a kind of a different layout in the dining room. Our dining room here at Cedar has an upstairs dining room, it's got a lower level dining room, and then it's got this um, pretty big bar area that I'm sitting in right now. Not to mention um, the patio. And then it's got a patio, yeah. and then it's got a sidewalk um, seating as well. And then we have an outdoor bar here as well. Oh, so wow. um, it is, it's a, it's a monster over here for yeah, sure. It sounds it's, like it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this place, this place on a Saturday, honestly, probably needs eight servers on, two bartenders, a food runner, two hosts, and then probably five cooks and a dishwasher to really crank um, what we're trying to do. So, but we've learned over there, just the layout of the dining room alone, um, it's just going to require way less people. And then the food that we're working with is uh, just a little, a little bit lower price point. So, yeah, well, that's, that's great time. And is Zach involved over there as well? Uh, the goal is to get Zach involved over there a little more. Zach is kind of just running the ship over here for me at the moment, um, yeah. along with our front of house manager. So he's 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 running the show. They're hitting the numbers we want to hit. Um, they're they're doing great. You know that's that's all you can ask for, right? Is, is, yes. is keep keep the business going the way we left it. And, you know they're they're seeing through our eyes and they're seeing through our lens. It's just exactly what we wanted. You know, right. one hour vacations. One hour vacations. And as you said, um, you know, having a great team behind you enables you to be more of the business leader and to start strategizing and, and expanding your vision and looking for you know, new ideas, new concepts, new ways to grow your current businesses. Um, right. And congratulations, by the way, on getting that second location open. Um, that's a big step. That's a it big is. step. It's a very, it's a very big step there. You know, there are lots of challenges. I, I tease back all the time. I said, Hey, that back there was a dumpster fire when we opened and then you came back here and figured it all out. So you're going to have to come do that again. <laughs> the second <laughs> I have to, have to come figure out all my problems I got going on over there. So, uh, well, you know what? That's, um, he'll probably be glad to do it. It's an opportunity for him. And, um, and then you can start focusing on, on, you know, what's next or improving operations, you know, in your current locations or whatever it is that you decide to do. Um, and uh, who knows, you know, uh, you take that uh, culinary group and, uh, you know, you might, you might want to franchise down the road or just open a bunch more cedars in, uh, in some other cities and states. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we came into this knowing that we weren't going to be satisfied with one, two, or three of them. We definitely want, you know, four or five of them. Um, are they different concepts? Are they, you know, we now have two separate concepts. Um, you know, so do we grow two concepts at the same time? Do we, you know, do we do three concepts, four different concepts, five different concepts? So it's just kind of, you know, those are, those are waters we're not in yet, uh, but when we get in that, we'll, we'll definitely have to navigate that. Uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of ideas in the in the think tank. So yeah, well, it's, yeah, and it's, it sounds like it, and that's that's the uh, the conundrum that you run into, um, you know, with, with the restaurant I, I was on with. Um, it's been about two weeks ago, but a uh, company out of Colorado, and uh, the gentleman he owns three concepts now. And I asked him, I'm like, why in the hell didn't you just repeat one of the first ones, <laughs> the first two? And he's like, well, you know, I'm a, cre I'm a creative kind and, and the building just wouldn't let me. It just wouldn't fit right. that concept. And uh, <laughs> plus, you know, I, th I think he's a big, he's a chef and a food person and he's just got a million ideas, you know, and, and he's like, okay, I got this concept and this concept and this concept. Right. That building would work for this one. Let's go with it. <laughs> um, 
So you guys will probably be in the same boat when the time comes. Yeah, probably. But that, that's awesome, and it's fun, and it's exciting, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're still enjoying going, coming to work every day. Oh, yeah. I mean, it. you know, uh, for the first – honestly, for the first year, it didn't even really feel like work. Um, yeah. you know, it was like, it was almost like coming to another home. Um, this, this last couple of months, you know, trying to get this place situated and in a good place and then open up, uh, another place. And then just going through all that process again with, you know, the board of health and setting up vendors and just everything down to building out an order guide and pricing everything out. And that definitely felt like work. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, sit, sitting at a desk, building out a POS system is like nails on a chalkboard. I mean, it is bad. I just yeah. building out all that stuff and pricing everything out. And it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. And, and we did a whole nother concept. So you just, you can't just pull everything and put it in another POS system. You got to just build it all out again. So I am, I am not meant to sit behind a desk and I'm meant to, be in a kitchen cooking something or, or whipping up a new dish or out talking to guests in the dining room or something like that. Definitely not, definitely not a desk guy. Yeah. I, I understand that. And, and so many of you um, creative uh, chefs and entrepreneurs, um, you know, just aren't meant to be behind the desk. I, you know, I don't mind it so much, um, but I'm, I'm a sales guy at heart. So I got to be yeah. talking to somebody, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, let, let, let's wrap it up and let me ask you kind of a wrap up question. Um, well, actually, I might I might have two more. Um, uh, the first one is um, is really about well, I just lost my train of thought. Um, we talked about what's next and um, I want to get to the advice for new entrepreneurs. Oh, man, I lost it. So let's just go with that one. It's one of those. Okay. Days. Um, no, I would say, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, let's just go with the advice one. And if the other one comes back to me, we'll, we'll follow up. Sure. Yeah, no, I, um, you know, again, I would go back to the, don't be afraid to jump. Um, you know, I had a, I had a pretty good situation where I was. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get that promotion, but I was a year away from another opportunity or, you know, when you work for a chain corporate restaurant, there's always opportunity. Me, um, especially where I was, Longhorn and Darden restaurants, and um, they're a great company to work for. I have no ill words against them. They are spectacular. I mean, they're the reason I can do what I can do today. They taught me so much, and um, all the mentors that I met through that, and the relationships I've developed. I mean, I mean, it's priceless. I mean, you can't put a price on it. So, um, but. Don't be afraid to, you know, better your life in a way. Don't be afraid to jump. Um, you know, my, my father um, very nicely offered, uh, offered something up and he said, you know, it's going to be really scary. You're going to leave behind something that you've, you've worked on for 10 years. I was, I was with Longhorn, so um, it's all I ever knew. But I knew that, you know, this, is, this was something that was going to better my life personally and, and so, so, so I jumped, you know, and, yeah. and you, can't, you can't be afraid to do it. And I'd say another, another good one is, um, you know, control what you can control. Uh, I learned that a long time ago from somebody. Um, you can't control if someone's having a bad day and they just walked into your restaurant. Uh, you can't control the weather. You can't control the rain. When it rains, half our, half our capacity is cut down because our patio is closed. Yeah. Um, you can't control those things. Control the three pillars of the restaurant business, and that's service, atmosphere, and food. You can control those three things. Um, so don't worry and don't try to control the things you can't. Control the things you can't control uh, or you'll go nuts. You'll just go, you'll go crazy trying to trying to control everything. Um, I like that. That's, that's good advice. Yeah, and then the third one would just be uh, your people. And I know, you know, obviously the first thing you think about when you think about people is, um, is your guests, but it's your people too, you know, your employees. Um, we can't do this without them. And, you know, people mistake the restaurant business, it doesn't matter if you're selling popsicles. It doesn't matter if you're selling beer. It doesn't matter what you're doing. We're in the people business. This isn't the food business. This isn't, this is the people business. Um, got to take care of your guests. We got to take care of your people uh, just as much. 
Um, they're everything, especially right now. Yes, sir. You're exactly right because you can't afford to – you don't want to lose them, number one, and you don't want to definitely have to get out in the marketplace and try to replace them. And um, you know, you've got a, it sounds like you've got a great team, a great staff. And, um, you know, I, I remembered there as you hit number three, what I was going to ask about was, was success measurement. Um, so I'll just, I'll just conclude with that. Um, and, and I think, I think I might know the answer, but uh, from a, from a business perspective and, and numbers kind of perspective, uh, kind of what are your key metrics that, that you're focused on? And I'm sure prime cost is one of them, but is it sales? Is, is there anything else that's, that you kind of watch closely? Yeah, I mean, you know, sales are king, right? So yeah. if you're, you're just cashing in, um, you know, that's a big one. Um, no, we, we definitely look at sales. We look at a lot of stuff. We look at labor and labor percentages. And, um, you know, we uh, we check what we sell every day. So our POS system is, is pretty awesome. We use Toast, um, you know, for mixed reviews. We love it. We, we use it here. We use it at our other location. I can view sales on a POS here and look at my sales over there. Um, I can get the sales combined. I can get them broken down into separate locations. Mm -hmm. um, we, we love our POS system, but we look at what we sell every day. That's probably the most important thing we look at um so we know what to prep you know my head chef gets in there and checks that out and um you know it's it's kind of come down to a science we know exactly how many is something we're going to sell almost every single day and right now especially with food being so inflated the last thing you want to do is over prep something and throw it away um, yes and again and again we we use fresh fresh stuff um, so our stuff, when we, when we cut filet I and mean, we break down whole tenderloins and cut that filet up, you got basically two days on it and it's out the door. So, um, you definitely want to know how much filet you're selling, how many burgers you're selling, how much shrimp you're selling. Um, so I'd say that's, that's probably one of the most important things we look at, um, but sales for sure. And, um, and labor as well, but our, our POS system is great. It, it breaks all that down for us. Well, I, I like the fact that you're, and, and that's something new. I've not heard of anybody really talking about looking at their items sold reports and, and things like that. And, and from the POS, it's, that's probably where you're going. Um, and, um, you know, that, that's great advice because definitely you don't want to over prep and you don't want to, um, you know, have waste. So that's a great strategy. And for those of you utilizing a POS system and aren't looking at those kind of numbers, uh, shame on you. And you need to get on. <laughs> right. You do. And, 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 and when you over prep, you know, you burn yourself twice, really. You, you throw the food away, but you also paid somebody to do that. And uh, again, we're talking about, you know, securing your people. And are you overworking them because you're prepping too much or, or what are you doing? You know, so uh, you definitely want to look at that because burning yourself once hurts. Burning yourself twice is, is the worst. So. Yeah. Fooled me one time, shame on me. Fooled me twice. No, I got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you got it backwards, yeah. I do. Right. I, today is just a Monday, my friend. I you've had it to is. suffer. You've had to suffer through me all, you know, through this uh, through this interview. So I appreciate your patience. But um, no, it's been great. And I appreciate you being on and sharing uh, all your all that wisdom and advice and things you've learned uh, throughout the years um, to try try and help our other um listeners or our listeners uh who are trying to grow their business to find more success for themselves so again uh this is uh this is uh jeremy faith with cedar and uh you guys are in covington kentucky on 701 main street website again is cedarculinary.com uh, please go visit and uh, see these guys have a cocktail have a meal uh, have some brunch and enjoy yourself. So thank you again, Jeremy, for being here today. Thank you so much. Um, hey, and for all our listeners, thank you guys for listening to another uh, episode of the Local Leaders Podcast. We look forward to seeing you on our next uh, podcast, which will be uh, coming up later this week. Thank you. <laughs>